Okay, so uh, carrying on from the last one, uh, I'll just show you what we've got here. Um, I haven't got a fuel sender to show you, but I've got a picture of one, okay? You've got the float at the bottom. You've got a little gear assembly here to get the drive at 90 degrees. That shaft goes upwards, and there's a little... You might be, I'll, I'll, put the, I'll put the picture up on here. Um, and there's a little arm with a peg in it, and that peg sits in there okay so as the float goes up and down so this will go up and down as well it will rotate and this is the fuel one because you've got the fire connectors on the back there uh, the other ones are slightly different i'll show you that in a minute so this is the fuel one um, and this is the kind that we get on the flaps okay so these are believe it or not these are new old stock never been used a little bit dusty yeah so once again we've got a connecting arm here but in here is that a little gearbox now i'm not going to take this apart because they're a real bitch to synchronize when you get them to put them back together so i'm not taking it apart uh, we will take the end cap off when it's tested and i'll show you uh, what happens so yeah so the arm moves yeah the mechanism in there moves once again a little peg fits into there and drives it round yeah it's all fairly simple analog isn't it uh, nothing nothing too technical i mean if you can get your head around um the fluctuating dc or the changing dc voltages causing a change in magnetic flux and magnetic polarity at the other end in the indicator then you've more or less got the gist of how it works so what we're going to do now uh, i'm going to move the camera uh, and we'll have a look at the test set which is on the bench here and uh, i'll run through a self test on the um, on the test set and so you can see the correlation um of the um uh, of the transmitter to the indicator um uh so we'll, what we'll do then is uh, we'll do that now um because my ear riches and i just have a terrible urge to stick my finger in it i don't want to do it on camera because it's a bit coarse isn't it? there's enough <coughs> coarseness going around at the moment so anyway yes yeah, so um right so we'll stop this now and i'll be back with you guys when i've readjusted the camera and my lights and everything else so stay cool and i'll be back with you shortly right welcome back um this is uh, this is take four because it's uh, i keep messing it up but we'll see if we can get it sorted this time uh, as long as i don't get any interruptions right so this is the uh, desin transmitter we're going to use um <coughs> uh, i've already tested this one so it's serviceable uh, as you can see it's a yellow one uh, yellow means it's 24 volts and it's system a b right? a for the transmitters b for the indicators the good thing about this test set is all the instructions on how to use it and what to expect are actually on the lid which is pretty good which i suppose um uh, for the time is is fairly standard now you get a great big uh, thick book or a bloody pdf that you've got to download but uh, yeah, in those days, the instructions were either on the lid or they were in the lid in a little booklet. Anyway, we're digressing here. So what we're going to do now is we've already spoken about this uh, lovely attachment gizmo. So I've taken, taken the centre screw out, as you can see. So we're going to screw that into there, get it around the right way. Now I've already... Uh, <coughs> there we go there we go that's got it right so that's fairly firm on there now so what we'll do now is we'll power on there we've got it sent to transmitter and on so what i'm looking for in for this particular model they're all that some are different this is a 135 fl so it's going to give me uh, I think it is just over 180 degrees of movement. So we're looking, if that's the starting point there, it's fairly arbitrary, the starting point. I'm not worried where it's starting. But the fact that we're getting about 180, just a bit a bit more. 
what's that? 180, 170, 175, is it? Something like that. Um, quite a bit of movement. <clears throat> so, yeah, and that's nice and smooth. So you can see, <coughs> as I move the lever, yeah, can you see the needle? Let me just uh, shuffle the test set along a bit. Is that better? There we go. I know there's a light on it, but uh, we won't worry about that. Okay. So we're looking for the smoothness of rotation and the fact we get what we're expected to get. Yeah. So, as I said before, this is serviceable. Um, so, right, so we'll turn that off. Turn that off. And we can oh, unscrew that and then we'll put the backpack on it. And, okay, so we're gonna, I'm going to simulate uh, simulate a couple of faults, right? So as you can see, we've got a nice smooth movement there. But if we lose a line, if the line goes open circuit, you can see what the problem is straight away. Yeah, so, boom. And that's what you tend to get if a line goes open circuit. Um, so what happens, right, if you get two round the wrong way? So, uh, let's swap number two and number one because this this happens when uh, when you're rebuilding a system if if the system has been apart and the leads the little leads that go in the back of this should be numbered anyway uh, but you know you might have lost the numbering so what kind of thing we're we looking for so to start with you can see instead of starting over here it's starting over there okay and we're now getting a reverse movement yeah so if you don't get what you expect, right, you need to be looking. If it's a jerky movement, then one of these has gone open circuit. If it's the reverse of what you expected, the good chance is you've got two crossed over. So, like I said, very simple to work with. Very simple to fault find on. Uh, DC analog systems have a tendency to be. <coughs> So, so yeah, so, uh, so uh, yeah, that's the that's a destined transmitter. This would possibly it's a position indicator. So there'd be an arm coming off here, uh, maybe to the flat mechanism, like on the Lancaster. Uh, so as the flat rotates, yeah, the, the linkage is pulled down, and it'll indicate on the gauge whereabouts the flap is. Um, uh, whereas the the fuel gauges are, have you seen? They're slightly different. <clears throat> um, yeah, anything else I need to talk about? Um, yeah, we'll just have a quick chat about the case um, before I put the... Uh, right, just a little quick chat about the case. You possibly noticed um, the few videos I've done on testing rooms of this area. They come in a very nice wooden case, brass handles, brass clips, extremely well made. This is... Um, some of these cases are mahogany. Um, some aren't um, and they're extremely well made they were meant to be robust um, and easily transportable uh, not like your your plastic case stuff these days um, which is I mean a good example I suppose uh, oh dear oops shouldn't have dropped that never mind get back up there you all right uh, my multimeter this is the one I use in the garage now if you compare this I mean this is plastic I've had this a good um, a good um, must be about 20 years now um, but you compare this to the Avo Mark 8 that I've got back at the Heritage Centre. Yeah, uh, it's no resemblance. That's far better made. Uh, the, uh, the, it's, it's just far better. Everything's far better on it. Um, and, uh, and I do like it. Um, I'd like one myself. But the problem is they are bulky. Same with these. Yeah, it's old analog kit. It is bulky. But what I want to bring your attention to, right, is on here is marked... 233 OCU. Uh, for those of you in the know, you'll know what you'll know what that is, but for those of you who don't, right, 233 OCU was Harriers. Um and I think they were at Wittering. Uh, I did look at me I did Google it the other day, uh, <clears throat> but I didn't write it down, which was rather foolish of me. But I know they ended up at Wittering. Uh they were somewhere else before then. Um, and uh, so, yeah, Harriers um, only went out of service uh, 
a few years ago well when i say a few years sort of 10 years or more ago okay so stay cool everyone um i have got a video in the pipeline that i'm going to be doing fairly soon which is on um um, um, um the um temperature gauges in the lancaster how they work uh and the wheat stone bridge system wheat stone bridge system uh that they that they use so yeah so stay cool uh please comment rate and subscribe hope you enjoyed it and i'll be back yeah soonish with another one take it easy now stay cool stay safe with all this crap going on bye for now